background feed. Working? Yes, it is. Can you hear me? I can hear you. You could hear me? Okay. You can. But you can hear me. I can. No, we're good. We got half the quorum. <laughs> yes, we do. A little loud. I'm getting a little background interference. If it gets too bad, I'm going to switch over to my iPad. Um, Shouldn't be anything from here. I do. Finally, finally figured out how to get to you, but I uh, made the mistake. Of, made the mistake of deciding to come home. Oh, it, you know, some it's a lot of times it's easier to do things from the office. Which is from what happens if I log on from the office from home? I discovered is that I have a nice uh, camera at my desk at the office that shows the empty chair. So, <laughs> So gotcha. I need to get it here somehow, and uh, I was having trouble getting on to my office emails to do that, but I was able to send it here and to my Gmail and then get on it somehow. Um, okay. Yeah. Hey, Lou, I think I'm going to log on from my iPad because I'm definitely, I'm getting a bunch of feedback over here. I'm going to leave my computer up and running in case I need to share screens. I'll just leave it up muted on this side. Uh, which reminds me, I do not have here the agenda. How are you, Paula? I'm going to mute. Well, thank you. Yeah. I'm going to walk away for a minute. So it looks like you're recording, Dave. Okay. Can you hear me, Paula? I can. Okay, great. Much better. Steve. The audio yeah. is, is much better from my iPad than it is from my computer. Yeah. Do you mean to be recording? Um, well, I guess I did. I'm just going to in. Yeah. So we have the minutes over here. All right, can start again. All right, let's call yep. order. Um, Paula, will you take notes? Yes, I will yeah. this month. Um, I won't be able to next month, just a heads up, because I may not be here, so. Um, You're not in, in, a, in, a, in order to follow up with that too, Paul, I can also send you, because they do the transcript right. of tonight's meeting, so okay. I can send that over to you as well. Perfect, thank you. Mm -hmm. So, calling to order, and we did a roll call the, of, of the two people here. Um, we all have the July and August reports. Don't want to move too quickly in case somebody gets that email that I just got and actually decides to join. But, um, 
such as Gail. Um, so, um, okay. Would you like me just to go ahead and start? Um, I was going to kind of suggest that we stall for about a minute because your email just came in. So at 7.39 on my phone. So my stuff there is a story. Okay. Um, okay. Something's cool. I've read it, fortunately. Um, yeah, why don't, why don't you get going on any high points you want from the, from the, the lion right. office to Phoenix? Okay. Well, I know that we did we did meet in the first part of July, so you guys have somewhat of an idea of what we were going into with the summer months. Um, but just kind of summarize with what occurred. Um, you know, our, our camp programs changed dramatically as a result of the situation that we're in. Um, we were able to accommodate um, up to 80 children, 40 in each program but we didn't even come close to hitting those numbers, understandably so. Um, you know, we were hoping that we would get close to that, um, but obviously due to concerns, um, you know, we averaged about 30 kids per week between the two programs, which made it manageable for us um, with all the protocols that were set in place. You know, we had to go with the route. The kids, the children at this time did not need to wear masks over the summer months. Um, I do. I know that now that that is changing. Children are going to be required. So if we were to come in and offer an after-school program, um, we would require the children to wear the masks while they're here, unless they're participating in a sport activity. Then at that point in time, they would be told to remove their masks at a specific time and then place back on when they're done. Um, but just kind of sticking on to the summer over here, we average about thirty kids. Um, thirty kids. For, uh, for between the two programs, we offered um, basically five through 10. And then what we did is we offered, a, we tried to do a drop in at the summer, at the playgrounds this summer um, for ages uh, 11 and up, um, just to provide some type of relief for the kids to maybe meet up for a social environment, meet up with their friends, um, their neighbors. Uh, unfortunately, that program did not take off the way that we would have liked. Um, a couple of the parks didn't really get any kids whatsoever. And like the pool, uh, Persian Park, they they got a few kids on a daily basis that took advantage. It was usually the same kids, um, but there was nothing substantial. You're talking maximum of five to eight kids per program. And eight kids would have been one of our higher attended days. So if we did the averages for it, we'd say at the pool, we probably got between four and five kids a day and the other programs between two and four kids, which was difficult to run with such low numbers. Um, you really would like to have, you know, 10, 10 plus kids in order to be able to run an effective program and to run activities. Um, but it was a different year and we, um, we did our best. We thought it would be a good opportunity to get the kids out and about and visit in our parks. Um, we did limited special events over the summer. It took us a little while to get going with that. We worked with, you know, we followed the governor's orders and his phase one and phase two of reopening. Um, phase two allowed us to move forward with some of these events. Um, so we were able to do uh, a movies on the lawn. We changed the location of our summer concerts and our, any, any outdoor event that we had large groups. So instead of doing it in the center of town, we did it on Rockwell Avenue um, because there was a larger space there than there is on the town green and, and the town hall lawn. Um, so we were able to accommodate much lar larger audiences because for an outdoor event, you could have up to 500 people as long as you're practicing physical distancing. So as a result, we put out the physical distance in circles on the lawn and people were asked to main, to um, stay within those physical distance circles. At Rockwell, um, we did get to the point where the audience was uh, larger than the physical distance in circles. But what the police did is the police shut down the road 
um, so that we were, people were able to hang out in the road. They were able to hang out across the street. So everyone was still able to physical, physical distance. And our largest, our largest crowd, which was our last concert, um, we had 430 people show up to a concert. Um, that was one of probably the highest, um, highest attended concert that I've been involved with other than a special concert like the West Indian Celebration. Um, so it was good to see. We were able to provide that, that outlet for, for people this summer. When most things were shut down, we were able to do that. Um, so like I said, getting back to movies on the lawn, um, we did, we, the first movies on the lawn, we had uh, 255 people and the second one we had 110 people. So people came out for that as well. Um, were the, um, were the, um, it the same people as usual? That I can't say. For the lawn itself, for the, for the movies or for the concerts or well, I mean, for generally both? You, you get a similar audience for those kind of things. I know when I used to go with my kids, you know, to certain programming, you would see, you know, the same people. Like, yeah. Um, um, I know that a lot of the regulars were there. I did not attend all of the concerts. I, I went to two of them for one of them. For the first one, I was there for most of the concert. And for one of the other concerts, I was there for approximately half an hour. And there were a lot of the usuals for the larger crowds that we had. It definitely brought in new people. And I also believe that it brought in not just people from Bloomfield, but it also brought in people from surrounding towns um, because a lot of the surrounding towns did not move forward with doing this type of activities. So it was nice. It was a feather and a cap for Bloomfield. We got, we got to show, you know, what we can do um, and we got to show off our towns. And, you know, it would have been nice if we, if it was in the center of town or, or even staying on the same location. Um, and during a different time, people would have been, hopefully would have been able to uh, visit our restaurants and, you know, dining, dining, dining establishments, which is part of the goal of when we do these things. Uh, we did bring in food trucks um, for this one food truck per, we didn't get them for all of the all of the concerts, but we got it for most of them. Um, we also worked out an agreement to have an ice cream truck there as well. So it was something for the full family. Um, so that was nice. Um, just finished up the monitoring report for both Hawk Hill and Lisa Lane. Um, that's part of requirement through NRCS. Um, since we've used uh, grant grant funding in order to uh, to acquire those properties, we need to do that on the on a yearly basis. Um, so we did that. We have decided not to move forward at the present time with the uh, seventh and eighth grade after school program. Um, that was the, the board of ed was still pushing it. They were, they were asking us to do it, but they want to do everything virtually. Um, we're at a time now where we feel as if we can open our doors um, in small numbers um, to people. We feel as if the kids need to get out and about and demonstrate some and, and blow off some steam, get some social and physical, some social interaction and physical uh, engagement where they're not able to do that as much due to the, either the distance learning or the hybrid method. Um, I know that there, that there are tents that have been put up at the Board of Ed's in order to try to get the kids outside as much as they can, but it's on a limited basis. So um, we're trying to do our best in order to provide that in the small co small cohorts that we're, that we're able to do. Um, so we put it on pause. We're going to reconvene uh, sometime in November to see if it's going to be uh, a realistic um, um, possibility. But we know that we don't think that we'll engage with the um, online activities for that age group for that program. We didn't have a good, we didn't have good success with it at the end of last school year. And with kids between doing the hybrid method, being in front of the computer screens all day to ask them to come back on front, on front of the computer screens for something like this, uh, we, we find it, we find it to be very challenging. Uh, moving forward, we're currently worked with Brad Klein in Wittenberry uh, Hills Golf Course to pay, uh, obtain a irrigation assessment report. Um, uh, this is Wittenberry Hills Golf Course is 17 years of age. Um, so as a result, some of the stuff is anticipated to begin to fail in, in the upcoming years. So we've had some other assessments on the course 
And out of both of the assessments that we've had, the irrigation has come up as high priorities. So we're, we just contracted out with a gentleman to come on out and to uh, do a full assessment on it and give us a report on what's needed um, in order to begin the process of replacing that, or at least begin to plan to replace that. Um, I'm not gonna touch base on Farmington River Park, but it's sticking with the golf course. Um, I did work with GeoQuest in order to move forward with an environmental um, review report on the house and the property. So it's basically, it's a pre-demo uh, assessment because that house at 194 Terry Plains Road is slated to be um, knocked down with the hopes to increase um, most likely uh, overflow parking for the, for the golf course. Um, so we, received that report from GeoQuest. Um, I don't want to touch base with that right now. Um, Leisure Services was heavily involved with the planning of the Black Lives Matter mural at the at, located at Town Hall. Um, it was a, um, a quick, very fast moving project that we worked on. Um, we worked on, we worked with a few, a, a small committee of three artists um, and as well as uh, a member from the Harper Foundation for Greater, for Greater Given, um, the mayor and um, an, uh, another member of the council um, sporadically popped in um, for discussions and for input. Um, so we worked on that project. We had 17 artists that came out and did, with three artists did the stencil in and then 17 artists were assigned a letter uh, for the 16 for the letters themselves. And then and, and the 17th artist did the, um, um, the, the hand, um, the Black, Black Lives Matter uh, power uh, hand uh, uh, in the mural itself. Um, so we worked with them for that. Um, in order, we worked with DPW, we have the, the site uh, prepped and the base, uh, the base uh, coat painted. Um, and then we worked with them for entertainment for the unveiling um, of it in the, the program that went along prior to, to that. Um, touch base on the summer concerts. We did move forward with working with an outside agency called, um, they called it the Impact Basketball League. Once phase two uh, orders came out, we knew that we could move forward with some basketball programming. So we worked with uh, Bloomfield residents that cre created the, this Impact Basketball League. It was for high school students and for adults. Um, it started off over at Rockwell Avenue. Um, you know, they, we put up the, the, the barriers there. We put up the physical distance signs, asked people to wear the masks. And after about a week and a half to two weeks of monitoring it, the crowds just kept getting bigger and bigger. And we knew that we could not contain and, and contain the size of the crowd um, in an effective manner. And um, so, we had concerns, so it was either to shut the program down or bring them indoors to 330 Park Avenue, where we could control the flow, where we allowed um, the two teams, the officials, the people that were working the events, and then one family member um, per player to come in and not to exceed uh, the, the number that was provided to them. Um, so we had a much better control on that. Um, we already had the disinfectant spray uh, on site, and um, all the signage was already on site. Um, so it made it a, a nice smooth transition to come over. So that ended up being um, a, a very successful program. There were 10 high school teams, six middle school teams with approximately 145 players. Um, so that would, that was, that's a good thing. Um, the brochure, uh, over the summer, I know I touched base on this during previous meetings, we didn't actually send out a physical copy of the summer brochure, and I don't think we're gonna do that move go, going forward. Uh, for the fall, we've been, we sent it out through email blast. It's up on the, the bloomfieldrec.com webpage. It's also up on the town's webpage as well. I believe I sent a copy to you, um, to, to, uh, to the committee um, to review as well. 
Um, so in what we're doing is weekly email blasts with upcoming programs. We find it to be much more uh, effective at this point and it is a, uh, a cost savings um, for us to, to go this route. It costs us about $5,000 per publication um, to put it together and then and approximately another $1,000 to, um, to mail it. So we'll say $6,000. Um, so there's a, save, there's a cost savings there. Um, let's see. Some of the new programming uh, this year, we're uh, teaming up with the Wittenberry Land Trust for a few uh, guided hikes. Uh, we reached out to them and asked them um, if they would be willing to, to provide some assistance with that. Um, so fortunately, um, we developed a, a good relation, working relationship with them. We actually just came off I don't know, Paula, if you went to the seminar itself, I did not attend. Um, but tonight uh, we did a, 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 um, a webinar this evening on owls. So hopefully it went well by the looks of it. Um, there's like smiles over there. So I'm assuming that that's a thumbs up. Um, so we're already in the planning stages for next year. I talked to Sharon Mann about it today. She has a couple ideas of some things that we would like to do. So, um, so we find that doing programs, the webinars and the um, anything electronic with the adults is easier at this point than it is for the younger generation. Um, you know, having a 13 year old and a 16 year old when their time is off from doing their online learning, if they're hopping on the, the computer um, or the gaming console, it's the game with what they want to do at that point. Right. right. <laughs> so, um, Few other things we're doing a uh, since we weren't able to move forward with the uh, the, the Memorial Day uh, 5K, we are doing a virtual 5K for Veterans Day this year. Um, we are also doing a uh, uh, from couch, couch to 5K. Um, some of that's going to be virtual. Some of that's going to be in person. Um, we're trying to come up with, I mentioned the after school programming, we're doing on a limited basis. We're gonna offer a creative crafts on Mondays and Wednesdays and sports on Tuesdays and Thursdays for grades, I believe it's grades four through eight uh, with two time slots for that. And so we're, we're hoping that that takes off and take, it, it's kind of a blast. This is kind of what recreation used to be like back in the eighties and even the early nineties. Um, and it's since morphed into more of a, after school based programming um, on a Monday through Friday base. So we're, we're trying to bring some of these old programs back and see how that they work um, to hopefully be able to get the kids out of the house if they are doing um, distance learning every day. Is um, the, can I just ask, is the craft thing, is that just a, um, they sign up for on a regular basis or it's mm -hmm. a craft? Well, there's a membership that's involved. Um, it's, you sign up for the series of them. Um, I think that we did them in sessions. I think we may have done them in four week sessions where that you register um, at that time. I, I have it in the publication somewhere. I'd have to look up that information specifically, but um, that is the plan was to do them in, in, in a series of them. And in addition to that, it's not in the publication um, but they began working on it during the months of November and December. We're looking to drop, do organized drop-in activities on Friday nights as well. So it may be a basketball night one night where they may organize a small three-on-three -three tournament. They may go ahead and do hot shot tournaments. Um, they may do knockout games, something that's going to be geared around basketball. And the next Friday night, it might be a big kickball game and it may be a hockey game, but it, we're trying to do something at different times of the day to hopefully get um, some, um, some participation in the program and an outlet for the, for the kids. Um, we are developing, this is not our, we did develop a system. Um, we worked with Simsbury uh, Parks and Rec and um, I'm not sure which other, it may have been Newington that Matthew worked with where they did open the pools over the summer. In order for them to open the pools, they did waves and people needed to pre-register for their time slot in order to get to the pool. So that's what we're doing right now with some, with some of our programming. Um, you're gonna see that with pickleball. So pickleball, we start the first week in October, 
on Monday evenings and we're doing two time slots, allowing 18 people per time slot to participate in it. So they have to come in, they have to log into bloomfieldrec.com and they have to physically register. You have to be a member already. And then when you go in, you have to sign up for that time slot. And then once you, once we've hit 18 people, then no more people are allowed to come in and to register. So when we goes to our supervisors, they have the list of who's already registered for that time slot. We're not allowing any walk-ins to come in, even if we haven't reached the 18 people we're still not going to allow them to come in because we, we want to, I don't want to say train our, our participants, but we need to set some type of standard and protocol. We want it to get people to, to learn, to go on and to register for it in advance. Um, it helps us, especially in, in the time of, of right now where we can only have so many people in there. So those, those are some of the new programs that we're doing right now. Ashley, hi Gail. Anybody? Um, all right, I guess then we can move into the old business item. Okay. Well, I just kind of touched base a little bit on the fall programs. Um, so I guess I kind of took that that time slide up. Um, some of the special events uh, we are doing moving forward with the Boobash. Um, we're going to do it in a controlled environment um, where everything will be outdoors. Um, and we're not, we're still going to solicit groups to come in to decorate their trunks, but we're going to buy between us, social news services are going to purchase all of the giveaways. So they're pre, they're going to be pre-wrapped and ready to go by us so that we're wearing our gloves, we're wearing our masks. And at that point they just come, to a specific area and then they grab them and then people that are handing them out will be required to wear, whether it be face shields, face masks and gloves. Um, so we can do it in a safe manner. So it'll just be outdoors. Um, we'll, have, we'll still have music there. Um, and we're looking to not do physical activity like a craft project that day, but we're looking to put together, whether it be a bag craft that they can take with them to go home or like a, a pizza box. You know, we've seen several different models that, that other towns have done. Um, but we still want to be able to do something like this for the children. And we think that we can do that in, in a safe manner. Uh, we're moving forward with uh, a grandparents day. Um, I believe that that's coming up next week. I would need to look, confirm that. Um, so we're doing that. Um, we're still going to move forward with some of our traditional um, activities. I believe we have pumpkin carving still. Um, and I know we have a paint night that's coming up as well. So we're trying to do as much things outside that we can. Um, so if you've driven by the center and you see the tent out in front, that tent was actually put up by for senior services for their programs over the summer months. Yeah, leisure services probably took advantage of it on a daily basis. So we, we offered to uh, continue it during the month of September and October so that we can do these activities outside um, so that we can still do them, still practice our physical distancing. You know, no air is fresher than being outdoors. You don't have to worry about the in, indoor um, air quality. Um, so we're trying to do as much stuff out there as we can. We're going to worry about outdoor air quality. I knew that too. <laughs> so we set up fans or something in there, get things moving. So that's really the update just, for the fall programs and special events. I really liked them when I um, started reading through the brochure. I thought they were pretty creative and um, just people, people need some different activities. Um, you know, I just asked somebody else, I'm going to sign up for the daytime uh, paint thing that's coming yep. up. I just saw that um, come across my email and I was like, oh, this looks cool. Yeah. <laughs> I had done Good. one before with Anthony, but I'm going to um, come, I'm going to take a half day off of work and come over. <laughs> Good for you. Well, that's what we'd like to hear. We, we want to hear that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, not everybody has had the opportunity to, to get out and about and to do things, you know, my activities and my hobbies fortunately haven't been shut down so i haven't missed too much of a beat but a lot of people's activities have you know shopping's one of your things or 
coming into a, a, a class that requires you to be confined to the four walls, you know, your life has changed dramatically over the last six months. So it's nice to, that, to hear that we're able to offer these. So thank you. Question. Um, and this sort of ties into the October programming, but um, one of the, the guided hikes that Whittenberry Land Trust is doing in conjunction with Leisure Services is the Halloween hike. Um, and I guess I, I have a question for Dave. I mean, the, the idea is we're going to do it at La Salette. If you haven't, you probably read the brochure, but we're going to do it at La Salette. And the idea is, you know, kids can wear their, their costumes. We're not going to go so far that that should be manageable. <laughs> um, and it's, I, it was my idea, so I think I have to figure out how we're going to do it, but it um, should be manageable. The thought was to have like a couple of hay bales and some pumpkins and stuff set up in a couple of different places so parents could take pictures of their kids, you know, in the Halloween costume um, at the top of the hill in La Salette Park. Um, you have a nice view of the Hartford skyline and the Oliver Philly house is a nice, you know, historic house. Um, we limited the enrollment um, to 25 and um, we did that more for, you know, the obviously the purpose of being able to maintain social distancing and keeping kind of things controlled. Um, what do you think, Dave, in terms of demand for that program, I mean, or that hike, do you think that that will appeal to parents? Um, you know, do you have any, any? It's going to be sporadic. I wish I could give you a definitive answer. Okay. Um, but unfortunately, I don't. Like, for example, when we do the, the flashlight hikes. Yeah. One, one weekend, we may have four people that show up for it. The next time that we do it, we may have 25 people that show up for it. It really depends on the day. It depends on the word of mouth that gets there. And, you know, say, for example, Gail was going to sign up with her kids. Gail may call her neighbor, and her best friend down the right. street, and then they may come in and to do it as a group. So it really depends. Okay. I thought it I wish sounded, I had an answer. I thought it sounded good. Hello, to me. Dave. Okay. Hello, Dave. Lincoln, Lincoln has joined us. Thank you, Lincoln. I did get your text message and I was trying to yes. figure uh, out with what I could do uh, over here while the meeting was going on, but I'm glad that well, you were yeah, able to it call got in. Me through. So thank you. It welcome. It seemed like there's a few numbers. Hi, guys. How's everyone doing? Hi. Sorry, I've been trying to get into the meeting since 7 30, actually. Well, you're and, here. And <laughs> uh, by phone, I am out of town, but I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I heard the last end of what Dave had to say. So I'll just listen in, okay? As okay. I'm, just wanted to know that I'm on the line. Thanks, Lincoln. Okay. Yeah. Oh, are, are, are we done with that question? Uh, Nobody else has questions. Um, I'm, I'm not apparently, so uh, you got more projects so, on, the, on this uh, list, update list. So. Yeah, some of them I can go through, um, but there are updates on all of these projects since we've last met. Um, Reservoir 2 was next on the list. Reservoir 2 um, was on last night's uh, land use and economic development subcommittee meeting. Um, my report there is we finally received the survey um, from the uh, from our surveyor that we've been working with, hired by the town, but working between um, the town of Bloomfield and the state of Connecticut. Um, so we actually took a, um, a site visit on, on property probably about four weeks ago. Um, it was myself, it was the surveyor, it was uh, Dan Carter from DPW, it was two gentlemen from the dams division, Jamie, who is the, was the property agent, but she's recently switched over to a new division, but yet she's agreed to stay on to finalize this, this land transfer or um, agreement, um, which we are nearing completion. Um, so we went there, we inspected it. Um, we got clarification out in the field. We went over to check out the Wittenberry Flying Clubs area 
which was nice because I met with the president of Flying Club back in February. He said that he was going to move forward as an organization to remove their footprint altogether, to remove their airfields, um, and to start to break things down. And based on everything that we saw when we were out there, the airfield was already gone. They ripped up all the asphalt, which was huge because we thought that that was going to be an expense to the town. Um, they began to break down all of their staging areas that they used. They, we'll call them a hut. Um, that they go and hunt with a table so that they could work on their um, uh, aircraft, uh, whether it be a, um, a plane. Um, I think that he said that one person may have had a jet and then helicopters um, at those spots. So they started to break those down and they're very close to removing their entire footprint which is nice because, you know, that was one of the things that came out of the NDDB um, database of uh, report was that they wanted to return to, to the original state of grasslands. Um, so that's going to happen. Um, so with the surveyor, with the surveyor finally completing that, we can now move forward with the state can put in the final documentation or can complete the, um, the agreement itself. So once they, they finalize that, which I'm actually meeting with Jamie from the state tomorrow, at, I think it's, it's either 10 or 1030 tomorrow morning to go over with the information that they're gonna be plugging in, it'll then go back over to the town attorney for his comments on, on it, which he's already provided a rough draft and he didn't have too many comments uh, on there. One of the requests that they originally wanted us to enter into the agreement at $1,000 for the 20 year agreement, we have gotten them to bring that, that down to a dollar. Um, so that's a good thing for us. Um, you know, we'll, we'll take that $999 and, spend, and gladly spend it somewhere else. Um, so, so we're nearing the end. I would anticipate this to, you know, I don't want to give the deadline saying that it's going to be completed by the end of 2020, but we're going to be close to hitting that mark at this point. Um, you know, unless something else pops up that I don't think is going to be the case. Um, we're definitely reducing our footprint over there from over 300 acres down to approximately 80 acres. Good. So, so that's my update for Reservoir 2. Um, is, do you know what the Flying Club is doing? Are they, where are they going? They have no location. They have no place to relocate at this point in time. So they did reach out to the state. They hired an attorney. There were concerns that the state was concerned that they were looking for some type of uh, litigation. But I think after speaking with the president that they just want to make sure that they restore the area back to the, to the, the best natural state that they can. Um, so I think that they hired somebody to come in. It wasn't an agronomist, but it was somebody in that, some type of environmental planner um, to review and to go over. Um, so I'll find out a little bit more about that, uh, well, how that came, how it finalized tomorrow, if it has been finalized yeah. with their discussions, but yeah. there's nowhere for them to relocate at this time. So, um, so is Seabury sort of in the loop on all this, just in terms of kind of knowing where things are going? At this point, um, the last discussion that I had was with Dick Watson, which was several months ago. Yeah. Um, when we were actually on site, we ran into Jim Trail, so I kind of gave him uh, a heads up while we were there. Yeah. Um, but there has been no other okay. actual correspondence with them until, because there's to this point, there really hasn't been much more to do with Seabury um, yeah. until we get until we're close to finalizing it. All of Seabury, the last meeting that was provided, um, it was discussed that the entire uh, 80 acres uh, fell within their Seabury Wildwood Trails fell within that. The only thing dealing with the surveyor that we found out is there is a little kick out on the north northeast portion of it that the Seabury Wildwood Trails actually goes off of state property and goes onto the adjacent landowner's property. Yeah. So that does need to be brought to the attention yeah. of Seabury. Since Seabury was the ones that developed the trails, um, 
I would like to see them go to the adjacent property owner to see if they can obtain an easement for it. Um, I think that they may have better luck than the town. Yeah. Surveys will do that. Yep. So it's good. To, I mean, it's good to know at this point, oh, yeah. right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Yep. So, but those, those trails were developed over 10 years ago. So, I mean, hopefully, hopefully nothing comes out of it. Lincoln, That's what bad. are you doing? Lincoln, what are you doing? Are you okay? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, it I'm, sounds uh, like something's falling and, on you. <laughs> and getting some other things done while in the meeting. I'm hearing everything, though. Okay. All right, Lincoln, what I'm going to do, because we can't hear you, I'm going to put you on mute. And so if you need to ask a question, you're just going to need to either raise your hand or unmute yourself. So can you hear me or you can't hear me? I can hear you loud and clear right now. Well, how okay. would you raise his hand? So what, um, I don't know how you do that. But I don't know. He can always mute himself on his phone. Do you know how to mute your, yourself, Lincoln? Yes, star six, okay. I think. Star Why six. don't you? Yeah. Okay, so I'll let you handle that then. Because I can do okay. it here. I just want you to be able to unmute yourself if you have a question. Yes. Okay. Um, guess we, we can move on to Sam Samuel Wheeler Park. Well, since the last meeting, um, we have received a few more uh, complaints, might be a strong word, concerns from some of the, the, the neighbors um, about cars driving on property. So um, there was a last minute uh, funding opportunity that was provided by the town council for us to be able to move forward with putting up the um, the low guard rail fence, uh, the barrier. I think I reported that during our July meeting. Um, that fence has now since gone up. Um, it went up um, last week and it was completed either yesterday, Monday or yesterday um, with the maintenance gate. So it's just under 700 feet long um, from end to end. Um, it has uh, pedestrian cutouts near the near the gate and then there's pedestrian cut out over in front of the tree. Um, it was set back off the road by 25 feet. Um, so I reported this to the admin and education uh, subcommittee last week with the property. Some of the concerns that came out of there is where's everybody gonna park? You know, I expressed that they would be able, there was plenty of space for them to be able to have minimal parallel park um, along School Street, and if they were to do that all the way up and down, that's you know 650 feet. You'd be able to get a substantial number of cars on property. Um, I did go over there the following day, took a picture of it. There's enough space that the cars could actually pull in, face for you know the nose in towards the fence. So you're looking out over the park itself, and you, there's still another eight to ten feet from my bunker uh, bumper of the car to the road. So there's opportunities for cars to, to park on location. Um, so the barrier fence has gone up because we did talk about a parking area um, and we strongly considered that. I know that we talked about it at uh, one of the committee meetings about what type of surfacing that would we, would we do. Working with DPW, we felt it would be best to not offer an actual designated parking area at the present time. If we need to go back and revisit that, there is money that's remaining in that project. We could go in and create it if we feel as if we have to. Um, but if we do that, it then becomes, we do need to get approval from the state and it requires a substantial amount of permit in order to make that happen in state approval. So with the way that it's designed now, we think it's a win-win for everybody. Um, and what we were also able to do with some of the remaining funds was DPW has since gone over to the area that really was getting beaten up um, due to the cars driving on it and the drought conditions. They were able to go in there and core aerate the area, um, put in some new seed and loam on property. So we're anticipating that it'll um, be able to come back. The only thing that we need now is some rain. Mm. Hopefully, and I don't see any in the near future, um, but hopefully we'll get something 
sometime within the next week or so um, because we're ideal growing conditions right now. So, so that's my update on Samuel. Well, the, other, the other question that came about at the admin and Ed was, was if there is additional overflow parking, would it be possible for them to park over at Metacomet School? Now I know at Metacomet School at one point in time, when we had the sheepdog trials, that's where people were parking and they were walking into the park from that location. I have since gone over to Metacomet School and there are two cutouts with very wide paths, excuse me, that you would be able to get on property. So if there was, if there were, we did hold some type of events at Samuel Whaler Reed Park, you could use Metacomet School. Granted, it was during off school hours for additional parking. <clears throat> Questions, Gail, I see any hand up. And then go ahead. Okay. Um, Dave, are you still monitoring the um, social media for Bloom, the Bloomfield pages? Monitoring for? Well, uh, for comments and things. Um, I saw the, quite a few comments on uh, Wheeler Park. Um, not kind of negative comments on the fencing and, you know, the mm -hmm. lack of parking and you know, before he had not, garbage this, stuff um, that people were picking up and mad about, but um, you know, I did, I don't comment on them. I don't I don't pay attention too much, and it, it, that's um, uh, um, for a reason. Um, you know, the social media can be um, it can be positive and it can be negative. Um, we monitor when people call in and register complaints for us. Um, so to answer your question, I do not canvas through the numerous um, social media sites that are uh, that are on throughout town. So we do know that there have been negatives and positives. Well, I, I guess uh, my question is, how much traffic are you, you know, how much traffic are we routinely getting there and how often would overflow parking come into place. I mean, I don't, I don't I see that as a passive recreation, you know, pretty area. Correct. Yeah. So, you know, um, so I mean, it's great. I, it's great people. It is great. People are enjoying it. Mm -hmm. um, as long as you're not having, you know, the accompanying problems of trash and things like that. But Correct. So I talked to one young lady today that was, she was yeah. calling in because she visits the park on a regular basis certainly not a um, um, an angry phone call or a, uh, a negative phone call. It was more of an inquiry of what's going on, you know, why was it put up? So I explained the process to her. She fully understood, explained to her that, you know, that they could park in numerous ways, that there was plenty of space between the road and the fence uh, to park a vehicle. She agreed with that. Um, she just wanted to know why it was put in place. So I explained pretty much with what you said, Paula, it is, uh, it is a passive park. Um, we've owned that property now since I believe it was the 80s when we acquired that land. Mm -hmm. And we have not experienced this up until between 18 and 24 months ago is when we started having a problem with cars pulling that far onto property and parking underneath the mm -hmm. tree. So as a result of that, that's why the barrier fence needed to go in. Um, you know, people, for the most part, respected that you know it's a closely mown area it doesn't give you the right to go in and to park in a closely mown area i mean you know, i use like an athletic field as it you know if we don't have a fence between uh the parking area and the athletic field it doesn't give you the right to go and to drive your car onto the athletic field it's no different in a passive park um and i did not want to as discussed here in previous meetings i did not want to litter the park with signs because then it takes away the beauty Mm -hmm. of, of the sign. The other, the other one was a gentleman that is a neighbor um, that did not agree with some of his other neighbors and he liked the cars going up there and he had, too had concerns um, of parking and why we put it. And so I don't think he necessarily agreed with the, with the stance that the town would, took with this. Um, but after my phone call with him, he actually did go out onto property, check it out, see that there was enough room for parking and then actually did email me back and letting me know that he stand, stand is corrected in that way. Still may not have fully agreed with the decision, but I think had a, a better understanding with why we move forward with putting the barrier there. 
Yep. Yep. Um, do you think it would be, I, I don't know, I'm just starting it out there. Would it be um, helpful, do you think, to put out something like a positive, um, you know, like flyer, like your flyer notices, like, oh, improvements to Samuel Wheeler Park. You know, we've got this nice fence. I mean, I, I think it's a positive move to that we did. And just, it's frustrating to um, see the negative comments when, you know, like you said, people that came to you, then when you explained what it was, um, then they turned positive on it. Um, do you think there's any way that like putting out like a, you know, I want to call it like an ad about it, you know, because people are always saying, you know, like, well, what do you do? What's going on? You know, just like a, a positive spin on it, you know, new improvements and, you know, that you can show the grass seating, the, you know, the plenty of parking. I don't know. Just, just a thought to throw out there. Um, so you're looking for us to put out ultimately a press release, a PR statement? Yeah, yeah like, you know, it's, it's good news that the town is invested in this park and, you know, and, you know, maybe the positive things that are going to come out, the, you know, different wildlife that's out there or, you know, whatever else about the park. Um, for the specific project, I don't know if I would move forward with that. I think that with all of the projects that we put together and that we finalized this year, doing a full summary of the projects is something that we could do and include yeah. Samuel Whaler yeah. read into there because right. there were plenty of other positive projects that we also completed this year. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I think that that's a good idea to highlight right. all of the achievements that we've done. Yeah, that, that, that was going to be my point. Maybe not do a single. Yeah, no, piece. that's good. Yeah. I just, I just thought of it for this one, but I, I did know that, um, and well, I, I was going to save it for my comments at the end, uh, but, um, you know, other people are trying to take credit for the work that Leisure Services is doing. And oh <laughs> it frustrates me. <laughs> wow. Um, well, I appreciate that as a, you know, but it's like for us, you know, we work for the residents, we work for the town. You know, do we need to relish in all of it? I'm, I'm not that person. I know what we do. I know what we do as a department. I think that most people that work with us have a good understanding of that. Um, I, I don't, but I don't know. It just, you know, I just am frustrated when, you know, the newcomers try to come and claim um, things for political gain mm -hmm. um, that really they didn't do. And really they don't have an idea about what, you know, what the, the work that went on behind the scenes um, mm -hmm. and, you know. And, and how long some of it took. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There's nothing, things don't happen overnight typically. Yeah. As I mean, we all know. We, we have the, that whole master parks plan that's been around how long? <laughs> 2014. Um, yeah. So. You know, and we do use it. And, I, you know, I know I've reported that back to this committee before. We use that plan on a regular basis. We still go to it. I mean, here we are six, almost seven years later or six and a half years now since it's been released and we still use it and we'll continue to use it. That um, is the, the whole budget process, you know, I mean, people don't realize that how long you have to plan these projects out ahead of time, you know, that you have the five year plan. And, you know, I just think sometimes explaining these things to people some way, you know, gives a little, um, authenticity to it and a little you know and maybe they want to come and join the committee then that's but that would be wonderful um but i don't know yeah you know to answer your question on the pr and the monitor and the social media that is was our plan and still is the plan for when the office assistant clerk type is two position is hired um when that position becomes available again um, that was written in into the job description for social media for the for the department because we know that there is a strong need um, for that, not just for the monitor and its side of it, but also to help us out with pushing out some of this information um, that we have and more because you know our email blasts are, are do well, um, it does very well. The signboards do well. 
post things on the town's website, but it's not the same thing as social media. Social media is basically instantaneous. Um, so we do know that there's an area that there's a need for it, but I, you know, I can't do it right now until I have that position in there because we're busy. <laughs> Thanks. Um, okay, speaking of planning ahead, how about uh, the Billy basketball courts? Billy basketball courts are done. Um, so, well, when I say done, they're, they're not, I guess, all the way done because as a result of it, I feel there's one other thing that we can do, but the lights have been put in place. They're fully operational. Um, they've been using them the majority of the summer. Um, so we made a strong push in order to get that taken care of so that they would be ready for the summer use. Well, with the timing of the pandemic, it was great um, that they were done. And then and we also moved forward and able to resurface the, pro the, the courts in a much quicker time frame than what I anticipated. Um, we kind of got held up a little bit in the process where I was had put on pause because there were other thoughts um, of what we might be able to do on property uh, with the courts but it came back to resurfacing the courts was what was the best. Um, you know, that was funding that was allocated um, during last year's budget cycle, the, um, the 19 20 budget cycle. So we were able to get that taken care of this year um, using Hinden Tennis to come in and they did a really nice job. Um, they did two colors on the courts. Uh, we chose the, the blue and orange um, on location. Um, it's really did a really, really nice job over there. All of the cracks at this point in time are not visible um, because they still just crack filled. They're, they're not a, um, they're not new courts to this point, but we should be able to get several years out of them. We do yeah. may have to call them in to do a little bit of crack fill um, to keep up with the maintenance of them so that it doesn't get to the area to the way that it did before. Um, but we're pleased with the outcome and I believe that the users are as well. They look great. Thank you. And it's nice to see with the concerts that, you know, having that whole east side of town kind of buzzing on a couple nights of the week with the Thursday concerts. Like, I know that we're really late in it and sunset right now is right around the seven o'clock hour, but we have another concert tomorrow night and our last one is going to be the following night because people are still coming out to them. And so they may wear a jacket tomorrow evening, but guess what? They can still come out and see what's what's do something that's outdoors um we have our light towers that we'll have on um so it's um it's a win-win for us so it's good to see anything else on that from anybody uh persian park okay persian park um i believe it was uh, the project was completed during our i know it was during our last committee meeting uh the basketball court um just to uh, revisit this uh, was the old one was torn up in the spring and the new one has since been constructed and it is definitely getting use. It's probably the largest outdoor court that we have. It is a full high school size outdoor basketball court and it has the square backboards on it versus the, the uh, fan backboard styles, which is an old style basketball. Um, backboard. Um, so if I could actually go back to uh, Bill, Lee Bill Lee basketball courts, that was the thing. When I said that the courts aren't done, that's what I would like to do next. I'd like to convert from the fan backboards over to a square backboard because it's much more desirable by the players um, if we do that. And I think that we'll be able to do that with use in this year's operating funds. We're back over to Persian Park. So we completed that project. Um, it's, they did a beautiful job over there. Um, I was on, on site last week um, for um, kind of continuing with the playscape. We did something. We know that we invited uh, the committee over last year for in November. We, I think we had one, one member of the, the general public attend that meeting. Um, so we thought if we bring it onto the uh, to location that we might have a little bit more. We did a direct mail-in to all of the residents. Um, in, in there we didn't want to do an email blast we didn't want to put it on social media because it's a neighborhood park so we really only want the neighbors we don't want um 
we don't want you know somebody that's in the you know, you know uh, a, a, separate, a different portion of town because it's designed for a walkable a walkable park for the for those. Um, so needless to say, we, there we didn't get any takers specifically to come out and to talk about the playscape. But there were three individuals that we saw on site. One of them had a child, so we were able to stop them and able to have a quick five ten minute conversation showing them the rendering that we showed to the committee um, last year. They talked about likes and dislikes on it. They basically agreed with everything that was being proposed. Um, so um, with what was being proposed, I didn't think I had quite enough money to move forward with that project. Um, but between the spring and the beginning part of the summer, there was a housing development that Lou and I was working on, and I know that some got brought out to the uh, to the committee here as well, um, with the town attorney, where the town attorney was, they wanted to put in a playscape when they already they had a private, they had a their own uh, playscape that was being uh, put in place for the development, but then they were also according to town, I think it was town charter that they needed to put in another playscape. We thought it was duplication too much. Um, we know that it would be nice uh, right up front, but the long-term investment that we would need to do for the upkeep of this didn't make sense to us. So he was able to negotiate uh, a, a lump sum. And so as a result, that lump sum will be able to be earmarked for to help out with the installation um, for the Persian Park Playscape. I believe it was either between ten and eleven thousand dollars that he was able to obtain for that. Well, I just want to comment that I thought that was a, a brilliant idea. I think that was Lou's idea because um, yeah. I remember talking about it at a um, at a an earlier meeting. Um, and I think it is it a zoning requirement. Like it was part of yeah. our yeah. And so you know, like any new subdivision that goes in, you have it. Uh, you have an area like that, and. Um, I mean, I just, I, what a great, you know, what a great solution not to duplicate that, have the town required for the maintenance and be able to get some additional money. So um, I just think that's great. But I don't want to take credit for that. I think that was Dave who came up with that. Okay. Well, Dave, that was a good idea. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that so that's where we are in the Persian Park at this point. So now that we've had the two meetings, we're not having a lot of public participation in there. Um, we feel we'd like to move forward with this project. Um, so what our plan is is she's gonna she um, um, Summer Baruby from Compan is gonna put together a nicer rendering at this point in time. According to the state bid though, we do need to go out, they need to develop the spec list for us, the spec sheet, and we do need to go out to bid. Um, so I'm hopeful that I'll have something for our October meeting to present to the committee with what the final costs or what, what the final project will look like. And then at that point, we'll then go out and um, release and get, get the, uh, the, the quotes um, to move forward with the project. And hopefully we'll be able to at least order the equipment this fall and depending on how how warm of a fall to the early part of winter is we might be able to move forward with installation during 2020 as well but if not then we'll just move uh, we'll bring it into the spring of 2021 but i'd like to at least have the the equipment itself purchased during 2020 because we want 2020 prices Unless they're going down. Unless it's going down. <laughs> That's right. Uh, any questions on that? Uh, I guess Farmington River Park might be next on the list. Yep. Um, don't have much of an update. Um, I haven't really done too much with it this year other than uh, reaching out. I was, when I was talking about 194 Terry Plains Road, as a result of that project, I have since gone through and reached out to GeoQuest for them to come in and to do an environmental review for pre-demo of the house at um, 460 Tungsis Avenue. So PO was recently issued to GeoQuest so that they can move forward with that. Once that comes in, we will then bid out both the projects for the Farmington River 
house and 194 as a, as a one package to hopefully get a better price um, to demo them both at the same time. This, the, the tricky part is going to be saving the foundation on that property and how we, what we do there because we know that we cannot just leave that as an, as an empty hole. Um, hope we can look for some money to cover everything like this floor. Well, we have some money. I mean, we we still have some money to move for you know to go. Um, I'd like to see what the prices come back in for the demo of the house. I want to see if we hit our budgetary number for it. Um, but hopefully, I'll have some update. I don't. I won't have anything for pre-demo for the October meeting, but there's a good chance I'll have something for the November meeting. I anticipate this being, most of my projects have been completed now, so I can start to focus in on some of these other things. Yeah. I say that today, but yeah. my time gets eaten up real, very quickly yeah. with other projects. Paul? Um. And I think um, the Wild and Sce Lower Farmington River Salmonbrook Wild and Scenic Committee is getting um, funding, you know, federal funding. So there is a, a component of our budget is available for small projects, small grants. Um, they're not, it's not big dollars, but it's generally matching. So if there's something, um, and obviously Farmington River Park, since, <laughs> since it's on the Farmington River, um, and sort of, you know, improving access to the river and having yep. better availability. So we should, we should, we should look at the plan, you know, the mm -hmm. committee should look at the plan and, um, you know, we should apply. Um, I'm, yep. I, I'm one of two people from Bloomfield on that wild and scenic committee um, and the education and outreach group that's responsible for setting up the parameters of small grants. You know, they're just getting going. So, um, we should um, think about that. Yep, and I think that, and thank you, Paula, for bringing that up. Um, you know, I know that during some of our discussions, I think that the uh, the river clearing, get, gaining access behind the house is probably, I think would be the desirable move um, okay. for submittal. Just because it's, 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 not a, it's not a large sum to move forward with that, it still costs. Um, and I think that that would be, and it really, if you take the house down and open up access, just think of what we just did to that park without doing any other improvements. Cause we know that we've replaced the culvert. Yep. You take the house down and you gain access to the river. It's like, it's beautiful right yep. there. And then anything else that we do is kind of, I don't want to say yep. gravy, but you know, it, you just build upon that. But those are, that's the two big things. Yeah. Actually, can I tell one story and then, um, I was talking to somebody um, back in September. Yeah, so September. Um, just happened to be ha having a conversation with a woman who was like taking care of her nephew, like the, her sister was dropping off the nephew. And they were going over to the big tree, the pinch out sycamore in Simsbury to be by the river. <laughs> this is in Bloomfield. Yeah. Um, so I just, you know, people just don't, know it's there and yep. i think if you do open up access i think people will start to take advantage of it yeah you know it's too bad too because in the you mentioned don't know it's there in the publication that we put out the online that was one of the things with the pandemic we we made an effort to try to highlight some of the local parks and it weren't just the town's local parks we also highlighted some of the land trust local uh, parks as well because their public access for everybody. We just wanted to provide people with opportunities to do things outdoors in the town of Bloomfield. Yeah. Well, Wilcox is getting a lot of traffic. I'll, I'll just yeah. say that for once. So. so, and since we're on the parks, if you don't mind, Lou, I'd like to just touch base on that as well. Paul did send out some pictures of, uh, uh, of some trees that were taken down. I did talk to Dan Carter about them this morning. Oh, that's what I need to do, Paula. Yeah. So I will get that going. So as, as the meeting's going on this evening, I'm gonna pull up a, uh, a map of the farm, I mean, of the Wilcox property so that Paula can show me the, the locations yeah. on where the trees themselves have fallen. Yeah, it's the chimney trail, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, I have a pretty good idea. I mean, just walk that trail going up there, but they being DPW, 
would like to have that. Yep. Walk up the trail, and then you'll find three trees down in front of you. It's kind of hard to miss. Storm <laughs> damage. I'm sorry. Are we talking about storm damage or something? Yeah. Yeah. Something? It's got to be I, storm I, damage. Yeah, I'm guessing it's either Isaiah's or, you know, then we had that not too long after Isaiah's. Um, there was a swath where you had microbursts and tornadoes and all of that. And it could have it could have been high winds that, you know, and weakened trees from Isaiah's that came down as a result of that second event. But, um, so. If you don't take okay. out three lines or something across roads, nobody knows. Yeah. Lou, do you mind if I share the screen for a moment? I know we're a little off topic over here since we're on the Farmington River Park, but I don't want to. Well, I don't want to lose this. Coming up in the next topic, share the screen by all means. Yeah, other parks. Okay. Next topic. Next topic. So. I'm not going to do much for Lincoln. No. But it just it just kind of shows where. Yeah. Where um, we are. So. The brown, the the brown, um, the brown sort of diagonal. That's an old road, apparently. Yep. Okay, so it is. Oh, is that that that's the old road in power lines too? Correct. Or the yeah. old road? Yes. Yeah. The yes. Old road in power lines. Um, I think it's beyond that, and it's up. It's sort of getting up toward what was the Buck property, right? It's along that stretch. So all three of them are going to be down in this property. Yeah, they're 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 literally within like 120 feet of each okay. other. Okay. I mean, it's boom, boom, boom. And okay. Do you know there's an area? I think DPW might have done some cleaning up, or mm -hmm. or maybe the number people did. I don't know the the mountain biking people, but there was an area where it seemed like some trees had come down and things had been cleared off before. It's that same area. Okay. Yeah. I know so, I know DPW did go up and do a lot. They had time this winter being yeah. the type of winter that it was yeah. so that they could that they were able to get up there and do some trail maintenance for us at Wilcox. Yeah, I think it's so, that same, I I would guess that's the same area they were working in where the three okay. trees are down. And like I okay. said they're they're very close together. They So that's good to know because they may come up with their vehicles cuz they have a a gator yeah. so they may come up the access road here yeah. with the power lines and the old road and then be able to yeah. work in that way. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. Thank you very much, Paula. Yeah. All right. Um, I guess the, the next overall topic is other parks, programs, and projects. And there's a number yeah. one is park school complex fields. Yeah, I don't think people. there's too much more. Let me look and see what I have. Park School Complex Fields, um, there were some areas on the north field, that would be the field that is between the tennis courts and the building. A couple areas didn't take as well. So we have not accepted those fields yet. Um, we accepted the other two fields. Um, they have since come back in and um, slit seed. And so we're hoping to see uh, good growth this fall. Um, Everyone um, felt comfortable that um, the fields were on par to move forward with the 2021 opening um, and that they felt, felt any of those small patchy areas would be able to be addressed and grow in during this fall season. Those fields are currently getting water. Um, it's not a true irrigation system. It is, it's an above ground irrigation system. So if you were to come to the property, you see pipes throughout that northern field that are raised up above. If you go over to the fields to the east of the building, the two main fields, they are using um, water from um, the fire hydrant that they ran across the parking lot at, uh, at 330 Park. There's kind of a speed bump that's there as a result of it. Um, they were able to tap into that and still irrigate the fields that way. Um, so those fields are looking great. They do need to come back in and oversee certain areas, but not the actual ball fields themselves. It's uh, it's around the perimeter of it. So when you drive by Park Avenue, just outside the fence line, you can see that the the grass didn't take as well as they would have hoped. So that they need to come in and reseed 
Um, I don't know with what their techniques that they're going to use, but that's an area. And then also on the northern portion of it where they took out those, um, the humps, the berms, um, there's still some areas that are bony uh, material that is still left on site. I actually uh, just emailed the, uh, uh, the, con the construction manager team this morning to get an update on that because we don't want to accept that area as it currently stands. Um, but all in all, the fields are looking good. Um, there was some cost savings within the project uh, that got, were, got freed up. So as a result of that, the committee is authorized up to a dollar amount for the bidding process to start to complete the irrigation pro uh, process for all three of those fields. So the fields not only will have under drainage, but they will also be fully irrigated once the project is completed, which is awesome news. As, as it turns into athletic fields because you know if you run into a summer like we just had here where we pretty much had drought conditions from the end of may into our current state it's it's tough you know to, to get to, to maintain the grass and activity on those fields um, so having water will be key it will be city water uh, we discussed potentially mm -hmm. having well water on location which is what i would have liked to have seen because when you're not paying for the city water, if you're using the well water, you're just paying for the electric, electricity for the pump and the installation of it. So I believe that there would be a, a substantial cost savings in the long run and you're not getting treated water. You know, so you're not getting the chlorine and some of the other uh, uh, chemicals that they put in to treat it. Um, so I think that we would have had a better quality grass if we were able to move forward with the well water, but it will be city water. The MDC will love the revenue, so. Yes, they will. You get a discount so, too. Well, they got to pay for the lines that they're running along Park Avenue as we speak. So, mm -hmm. so that's my update on the fields. Uh, any questions about Park School Complex? Any part of that project from anybody? No. Right. Um, actually, I actually forgot something. So, the Park School Complex, not just the fields themselves. When they constructed the tennis courts, they did hydro seed around the tennis courts. That was part of their, um, that was part of their, uh, um, the specs that went along with that project. By the time that they completed the tennis courts, we were getting just started in the drought conditions. So the grass took in certain areas, but not to our liking. So as a result, the contractor is coming in. He's going to meet with us either. Uh, either tomorrow or Friday. He's got a job over in Simsbury. He's going to look at the property and he has agreed to come in and to fully restore the, the, the grounds. So to our acceptable, so we can fully accept that. It's like we're doing a lot of fall seating. It's time to grow. It would have been nice to have them in already. I mean, these are perfect, ideal growing temperatures. We just need the rain. Well, let's hope we're not going to need spring season. <laughs> <laughs> let's hope uh, not. All right. Any, anything else on any current project, completed projects? Yeah, I have a question. Yes, I. Um, Go ahead. So, on the, um, um, what do you call it? Um, the, the Human Services Building, do you, mm -hmm. does it not have a CO yet? It does not. What, why? <laughs> that seems like it was done and you guys are in there. We've been in there for 15 months now. Yeah. I believe. Still it's temporary? Um, I believe that the holdup is the electrical inspector is having issues with one of the electrical units. Um, I can't speak on it as, 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 a, as a matter of fact. Um, because I'm not an expert in it and I'm not that, that, that well versed, but it has something to do with the UL requirement, the UL. UL says that they meet all the requirements. UL, as we all know, is the, the lead, you know, manufacturer for most of these electrical components. Um, and our electrical inspector, I don't believe is, um, accepting it for whatever reason. That's his is dumbed down that I could give you a response of knowing that's that's somewhere in that area is where the holdup is. 
but there are other things in the in the building right now that um, there are levels of concern. For example, the ice machine um, flooded our kitchen and destroyed half of the floor in there. Um, so the construction manager said that the town owns it. You know, I wasn't happy with that response. So at the last building committee meeting, I don't want to say I put up a fuss, but I let it known to the committee that I don't understand how the town's responsible for that. Um, there's a drain that's underneath the ice machine. And I guess according to code, you're not able to drop the, the, the line directly into the drain for the concerns that bacteria may work its way back into the ice machine. I guess that all makes sense to me, right? But they place it on the floor right next to it. They didn't like suspend it up above the drain so it drips into the drain. So what happened and they didn't put a pitch into the drain. So the condensation and ice melt was just melting and coming down through the drain tube. And it must have just been landing on the water on the floor itself and dissipating. And the next thing you know, over the summer months, I get you know, one of our employees comes in and brings the attention to Matthew. Matthew comes and gets me, says, Dave, there's something wrong with the floor over here. He's like, it's starting to chip in this area. And I walk in there. And I said, the floor is not chipping. I said, the floor is disintegrating right in front of us. This floor is soaked. And so then I looked up and you could see that the water has worked its way underneath the tiles all the way across the floor. So the entire floor is going to need to be replaced. Yeah. So I'm happy that we don't have a full CO right now. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> but it's just been so long. That's all. And most of it has to do with the finalizing it between the construction manager and the building inspector. That's, there are a few things that they need to clean up. And it is too long. I think everyone on the committee would feel the same way. I don't feel like I'm talking out of school by making that comment as well. Mm. You know, we're 15 months into the building now. Lincoln, did you have something? Yes, uh, it's more of a comment. I just want to say the the facelift on the Billy Field uh, on Rockwell, uh, the Billy basketball court up yep. here is beautiful. I Thank think uh, it's the most I've seen kids come out and play there within the past, say, 10 years. My son is a basketball player also. I don't know if you know that day but i've been taking him up there and him and his friend it's definitely being used and the oh, census and are the census are the kids and the parent and the folks that live around that area uh, are really impressed with the face of it you know, so i told them to send you a memo at the leisure service or contact you and let you know that go down to the town hall, let them know, but it makes a huge difference. And you would know the difference until you see the outpour of parents and kids and how much they appreciate it. You know? yeah. So whoever did that, that, they did a beautiful job. Um, Thank you. So that's Thank, you. Much it. Thank you for sharing Another those kind words. It's a, it's a, it means well, yeah, a lot. Thank that's you. Why I definitely want to make sure I'm in these meetings, this meeting here tonight. Uh, another thing is uh, the soccer field. When do you see it uh, opening date? Spring of 20, like 2021. It'll be open next spring. I mean, we, yeah. I mean, could we open it right now? Potentially. Yeah. Um, we think that this growing, finalizing it this growing season will do a lot, a lot better if we keep people off for this final season, but it'll definitely be ready for 2021 spring. So you guys will be out there yeah. next year. Okay. And, um, and it's, going back a little bit on the big, big uh, Billy field on Rockwell, one lady asked me how they didn't put in a little mini cord for the younger kids. And I said it was a good idea for her to contact you and see if that's possible. But I wanted to at least bring it up to you that well, uh, she had asked. Well, that's good feedback, Lincoln. I appreciate that feedback. Definitely, by all means, 
um, if you have any anyone that comes to you as you do, send them over our way so I can have discussion and I could um, I would provide to them or you know advise them in ways that they can be heard um, because it's important yeah. for them to be heard. So, for example, one of the things that came up and we put in as a Department of Leisure Services was a master parks plan for Rockwell Park. Um, that came yeah, about during yeah. the process for the basketball courts. Do you, there was some um, um, reluctance to move forward with resurfacing the courts. They, they, some wanted new courts to be put on place. So, you know, my suggestion at that point was rather than just working off of this suggestion and this suggestion, let's vet the park out as an entirety not just in specific areas let's look at the basketball yeah, courts yeah. Look at the, let's look at the baseball fields because we know that the baseball program in town isn't what it once was so the need for all three baseball um yeah. baseball fields over there is is it's, it's it, we don't need all three of them anymore um yeah so what could you do to redesign in having youth basketball courts um is not a new idea um, yeah. I, I, I appreciate that feedback, um, but that is definitely something to, cons to consider and is something that you could potentially put on that property. Um, yeah. So, you know, and that's why, so if we were to do that master plan, we would do it like how we did the other one. We would have public forums for people to come in and to express some things that they may want to see in that area, in that yeah. park. And it is an active park. Yeah. Between yeah, that and the park school complex, they're, they're, they're the two busiest parks that we have in town. Well, yes, yeah, this summer, especially when it was reopened, that the kids could go out to play. I think at one point it was 100, 200 kids <laughs> yeah. down there trying to play basketball. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah. This we, is um, very good. Yeah. So I, I appreciate the feedback. It's nice for you knowing that you have intimate knowledge, you know, due to your son going yeah. down there. Um, yeah. I have been down there on several occasions myself and I, we were also monitoring parks throughout the summer and we were sending staff members over to give us reports, um, yeah. give us feedback with the utilization of them. And we know that yeah. Rockwell courts have definitely amazing. been utilized this year. It were out. Yeah. That's the purpose of having those type of parks and the facelift yeah. and it just refreshing mm -hmm. the area and the lights and, you know, so. It, it confirms the it yeah, confirms the need there. to it confirms the need to invest in parks. Yeah, active parks, yeah. passive Definitely. parks. There's something for everybody. Yeah. Well, that's pretty much it. That's all my comments, and I think you're doing a beautiful job. You know, so keep it Thank up. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's like when, uh, moving back to the end of briefly. Um, hopefully, briefly. Um, I think we, is there anything you need to add by way of program updates or have we been through that enough? I think we probably went through all of that. All right. We have no new business and since it's a special meeting, we can't add any. So that moves us to, I guess, what would be uh, any public comments to anybody who has to pass along uh, I guess we got some from Lincoln, but anybody else? Oh, we also got some from Dale all around. Um, that moves us to comments oh. from the committee. Oh, no, oh, okay. I'm sorry, I wasn't looking. Com com well, well, comments from the committee. Comments from the committee is fine. Um, I guess I'm just wondering if there's any been any further correspondence with the New England Mountain Biking Association. Folks. There has. Um, they have reached out to me. I can honestly tell you that I have not done. I have okay. not moved forward. I can't say that I did try to reach out to the manager because I need his direction on what yeah. he would like us to do. Um, and I've been unsuccessful to this point. Okay. Um, but I can say that also that I have not made a strong push to, yeah. to, to pursue that um, due to other yeah. um, the 
I'm not trying to deflect or to, to pass anything over to my business, but it is a busy schedule. And right. unfortunately I just was not able to tackle that this summer. Yeah. But they're still, but they're still interested. Is the mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Okay, good. Um, what other committee comments? I'll watch the screen this time. Um, seeing none. Um, I I just would observe that it looks like we've accomplished, we meaning the department has accomplished a great deal this summer. Um, and, and I think we should all appreciate that. And I know we do. Um, hopefully the town does as well. Um, approval of the minutes. I guess I, I have a, a comment that goes with that. Uh, as we sit here tonight, uh, there are two people who have been sworn in and uh, official committee members, Paul and myself. So we have a quorum. Um, but we would like a real quorum. So um, if, if everybody else sometime within the next month would try to make an appointment and get in there. Um, I have an appointment tomorrow at 10 to 10. Other people, I mean, if, if, if it becomes a real problem with the town clerk's hours, maybe somebody, and I know the only other person on right now is Lincoln, but uh, I'll encourage people to get, get back to us and we'll see if we can find some way to, to come up with another time when somebody can get sworn in. Um, so um, the minutes that we have are from a meeting that wasn't an official meeting, so I don't know as we need to, I guess we could uh, ratify them. Um, if, if somebody who's an official member would make a motion. Um, I guess I will move to ratify the minutes. Um, and I guess I'll have to second that. Um, and then since, we, well, in favor, anybody opposed? Uh, we've accomplished something. Um, and we can take a motion to adjourn and thank everybody who is here from attending, particularly uh, the, the special out of town. So I'll move to adjourn. <laughs> I'll move to adjourn. Yeah, good. Let's just adjourn at 9.07. No, nah, that's what my computer says. No, 9.07. Yeah. <laughs> I got it. Thank, thank you all and uh, good night. Good night. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Have thank a good you. evening, everybody. Yeah. Bye. 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 Right. All right. Bye, Lincoln. Bye. Bye, bye, Paula. Bye. Hello. Have a good night. Good night. And goodbye.